Hello my soccer universe! Thanks to the new additions, the wall is as I want it to be, it's complete. We have for every uh, spot here, we have exactly one team, no teams are double and I'm very happy about that. So yeah, of course in this week as we will see those two new additions did not do all the all the well. Pretty much on the day that I got them, they both went down. But we're not starting either in France or in Portugal, we have to start in Barcelona. I'm wearing Barcelona and you know, if you can discern a pattern, I keep the Barcelona jersey from 01, 02 up there because I think the current Barcelona is more towards that version. But when I do something spectacular, I think I pull out the, the Champions League winning jersey for Barcelona in many ways. And yeah, let's start in a Copa del Rey. Barcelona did the mini remontada um, uh, Wednesday evening in a game where, yes, I think especially in the first half, Barcelona was really, really um, outstanding and Messi uh, seemed like a man possessed in many ways, really giving Sevilla trouble. And they get their goal early through Dembele, where actually the attack seemed already be stalled. The ball comes to Dembele and he just looks out and puts it into in, in, in the net. There were many more chances, many more, there were a few more chances for Barcelona to score actually a second goal right before the, uh, before the half, but it was not to be and Sevilla was hanging on and this was to me the big, uh, you know, negative for Sevilla. You beat Barcelona because you played from a, a admittedly solid defense, but you played, played proactively going forward. And here they, they only tried to hang on to that result. Yes, you just got beaten by Barcelona, but you know, uh, you're paying, playing them a second time. I don't think that Ronald Koeman is there, such a tactical genius, at least not as compared to their actual coach, which I really think is one of the best coaches in Spain at the moment. Uh, but no, they're hanging on. It was really, really disappointing. And Barcelona had their chances uh, also in the, sec in the second half. I think, um, was it uh, Alba who hit with a really great shot the post? But then Lucas Ocampos come, come, comes on and he's a little bit a talisman, but um, did not turn out this uh, way this time, time around. Because a penalty is given, I think Minguez uh, brings down um, a Barcelona player and of course everyone, ah, no, 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 because they, everyone knew if Sevilla converts the penalty, they are through to the next round. However, Ocampos shoots it very weakly and Ter Stegen can easily save it. Uh, yes, if he's in the wrong corner, it's in, but uh, that was a rather, rather easy save for uh, Ter Stegen. And then uh, Barcelona goes forward and tries to get the goal that will send them to overtime, but it really seemed in many ways that um, Sevilla might hang on, but that they completely implode. Uh, the holding by Fernando to give him the second um, uh, yellow to be sent, sent off, I already thought was rather unnecessary because there was nothing to come from that attack to, to be honest but you know okay you have at that moment two minutes to play and there's a free kick from Messi that got deflected into a corner and from that corner kick yeah um it comes in it seems he goes out for another corner kick and I don't know what possessed him Diego Carlos tried to save the corner kick uh, and get the ball back in play and gets the ball back in play to Griezmann who takes the ball, puts it across, and Piquet makes the 2 0 and thus equalizes the score. And from that moment on, it was clear that only Barcelona is going to move, move on. Uh, but I have to say, as much as, especially in the first half, Barcelona would have deserved to win this game 2 0 and move on, I question the tactics by Sevilla, and even more so, I have to question uh, this sequence at the end. I mean, um, okay, you can miss a, a penalty. Yes, Ocampos was fouled. Uh, there's this saying in uh, Germany, uh, in German, that, uh, that it never the one who's fouled should never shoot. I don't really believe in that. That, I think, is maybe, maybe right. But pulling yourself a little bit unnecessary, one man down, and then get the other corner. Chances are that your goalkeeper will take it out and you can seal the game there, not put it back into play 
for uh, Griezmann. Uh, yeah, he is not great for Barcelona overall, but he has a pretty nice uh, foot there that uh, can uh, get someone out. So I really, really thought it was in many ways Barcelona uh, winning, but I think equally Sevilla doing every, 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 everything to lose that game. And yes, uh, Martin Braithwaite in the 95th after Al Albacross, and that's the other thing, there was no Messi assist or goal in there, and, and that one he still was very instrumental in the whole whole thing. Gets the third, third goal. Um, Sevilla tried, but I, th I think I would have to have a Barcelona closer to the fourth than uh, Sevilla is uh, close to getting goals. So Barcelona moves on to the final. Where they will meet an old foe in Athletic Bilbao. I think this might might be. I'm not 100% sure the most played final between Bar It seems at least to me. Barcelona against Athletic Club. Athletic Club found themselves one down uh, to Levante. However, who scored the goal more, more or less with, 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 with the first shots. Uh, then they get a penalty when actually if the ref was a little bit more uh, alert. He could have let the game go on and Raul Garcia would have made the goal already. Well, he makes it at least from the pan penalty spot. So, um, it did not influence the game. I thought, um, from all I could say, Athletic Bilbao then was overall the better team. Uh, however, Levante manages to get into overtime. And it is then in the 112th minute when Berenguer takes a shot that gets a very wicked deflection and goes into net and Bilbao is through to the final. Levante looked positively gassed, especially in overtime. And I say Barcelona, Bilbao. And Bilbao plays two cup finals within two weeks. One against the Real Sociedad and one against Barcelona. The two teams they probably love the most in many, many ways. So yeah, but uh, it was not an uninteresting cup round. Um, in the league, we have tonight, and probably this will post after this game uh, is finished, uh, the, uh, the Derby de la Comunidad between Valencia and Villarreal. Um, we have, of course, the Derby Matrileño in there and a few other interesting games, but I think that's all that we can look forward to. It's a very interesting La Liga weekend. We have to talk also about league uh, because there were some interesting developments there as well. Lyon. We are getting a win through Awad. This was all down to Depay, who got fouled in the box, staying up and seeing Awad and assisting him. If he would have went down, I'm not sure if the penalty would, would have been given. He probably was going for it. But he kept on going. Very nice. And uh, Awad gets the goal um, for Lyon. And that put um, Lille and PSG under pressure. PSG get the win at Bordeaux was, you know, not a lot, not, not a great, great win, but you know, just uh, get the three points. Sarabia scores in the 20th, maybe there could have been a few more, but you know, Bordeaux also had the chances. But overall, uh, PSG, I think a deserved winner. Lille, however, had a whole lot more trouble and it was David, Canadian, it's not David, it's David, uh, who scores the two goals, but one came in the 90th minute. I mean, an absolute crazy uh, goal. Uh, Mondanda surely to blame there, where the ball, he just manages to get a little bit through the box and then the ball from uh, short range. And then from the, off the kickoff, um, just a minute later, uh, Ikone, uh, there's a, a counter-attack and Ikone plays it into David, who then makes it 2-0 for Marseille again. Uh, uh, Marseille, though, have a new president and they have a new coach in Sampaioli, who seems to fit to this team just perfectly. But yeah, Lille with a huge win because that means they will stay in first place. Monaco, however, a very deserved loss to Strasbourg, who had the better chances. Um, and they get the win in the 91st minute. And so that definitely takes Monaco a little bit out of the running for the title, for sure. Because now in the standings, we see Monaco's gap is now again four points behind Lyon. It really seems now a three-way race in many ways, although, you know, Monaco might get back in there. Yes, it is in favor of PSG, but Lille... Still hang, hanging on there. I'm looking forward to the top tool. Lots of changes in mid-table. Uh, again, shout out to Lance, shout out to Mets. Those are two teams that you wouldn't have expected up, up there. Marseille with a few games in hand. So if we adjust for that, 
We actually see the Marseille would move up into seventh, still a little bit behind uh, ex expectations. On the bottom, it's also a tight one between Lorient, Nim, and Nantes, uh, with Nantes actually looking at the moment to be the team that goes into the relegation. Nim maybe has a chance there as well, but uh, over understandings, yeah, uh, it's a three way race and it's very, 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 very tight at the moment. We'll finish with cup action. Ah, with cup action in France first, which is on the weekend. I talked talk about it in the last review video. I mean, Nice Monaco is the big, big one. Brest against PSG is also a league uh, duel, but you know, most of them play really uh, lower tier clubs. Um, now we go cup action in Portugal. Uh, a big surprise, Braga being 3 0 up within 28 minutes against Porto. And basically that sent them through already to all to the next round. Ottavio uh, in the 2020 in, in the 28th gets a goal back. Then uh, Borja is sent off for Braga five minutes later. You think there might something come with us only a goal by Musa Marega. And but probably I did not see much, but I assume it was probably a tight uh, uh, and a dramatic game. But Braga hang hangs on after a really, really great showing, one has to say. Benfica against Sturil, of course, uh, relatively easy tunnel win. I mean, there was not much uh, trouble beforehand. In Portugal, we also hear the matches for the next round. I think Braga, Guimarães on Tuesday, which we'll probably talk then a week later, because that's exactly at the spot where it's not, where I will probably not be able to cover that in the review anymore. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the games uh, that happened in Western Europe. I decided I'll do this video and I will do uh, the, you know, whatever happened in England, Germany, Austria and Italy uh, in the review we, we video at the beginning of next week. Um, but I think the most exciting part was definitely the Barcelona game. And also what's hap happening in France, I think the Ligue 1 uh, happenings I, is something that I'm really, really excited about at this very, very moment. It's probably the most exciting title race we have in Europe. It's not Serie A. Surprisingly. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.